this video, we're gonna look at why you forget what you were doing as soon as you walk into another room. Imagine this, you're working at your desk and then you decide you wanna go to the kitchen to go grab a glass of water. So you head over there and then as soon as you get to the kitchen, you've forgotten what you were doing in the first place. You ask yourself, wait, wait why did I walk in here again? What was I doing? Does this ever happen to you? If so, click the like button so that I know I'm on the right track with content that you will find helpful. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I'm a physician specializing in integrative psychiatry and sleep medicine. Before we get started, I'd like to invite you to grab a copy of my free holistic sleep guide. The guide is available on my website at intrabalance.com forward slash sleep guide, and the link is also available in the video description. This phenomenon of going to another room and then completely forgetting why you went there in the first place is called the doorway effect. I hear this from my patients all the time and they'll come to me asking, is this a sign of a bigger memory issue? Should I be concerned about this? But the thing is that this happens to all of us. Most of us have experienced this at some point or another. The brain files information away according to context. This includes things like your location or your environment. This is called an event boundary. When you are going from one location to another, it's almost like hitting refresh on your mind's browser. So it's like you're starting over. And that is known as the location updating effect. That change of location makes it easier for you to forget. For example, you're more likely to forget something if you're walking from one room to another. So from let's say your home office to your kitchen versus walking across your office to the other side of the same room. And this applies not only to physically changing locations, going from one location to another, but it also applies to virtually changing locations. Going from one tab on your browser to another is going to make it more likely for you to forget or not fully encode the memory from the previous context. Dr. Oliver Bauman is one of the researchers who has been studying this doorway effect. And he uses this uh, analogy of the department store. So he says that, for example, if you are in a large department store and you're going from one floor to another, you're more likely to remember whatever the thing is that you were trying to remember because the context is basically the same. In department stores, usually the, all the different floors kind of look similar. But if you are going from the department store now out into the parking lot, you're more likely to forget the task or the memory because the location is totally different. So that is an example of the location updating effect. Now, of course, memory function and the mind and brain function are much more nuanced than this. It's not that doorways always cause issues with memory or that transitioning locations is always going to be associated with forgetfulness. But this does kind of help explain why it might be that when you're going to the kitchen to grab the glass of water that you totally forget why you were there as soon as you got there. More recent studies looking at this phenomenon haven't quite replicated these results yet. So more research is going on to understand how this phenomenon actually works. One thing we do know, however, is that you're more likely to forget things when you are cognitively overloaded meaning when your mind is trying to do multiple things all at once, or you just have a lot going on. When your brain and your mind are cluttered, it is hard to hold on to things and to remember things. It's hard to pay attention. Memory and attention are closely interlinked. If you are not fully paying attention in the moment to something, it's gonna be hard to remember it. If you are multitasking, that also affects your memory and attention and will cause a higher likelihood of forgetfulness. And then, of course, you know, I love to speak about sleep and sleep deprivation is also going to affect your brain's ability to encode memories, to pay attention, and can increase the likelihood that you are going to be forgetful. Having this information, what do you do about this? The first thing I would recommend is to really be intentional about the things that you are doing. Slow down, there is no need to rush. And I am speaking from personal experience here. I am someone who tends to jump from one thing to another thing and rush around. And I know that I'm more forgetful when I do that. 
So slowing down, being intentional and being mindful has a huge impact on your ability to remember things and also to pay attention. Mindfulness is an antidote to multitasking. And how do you practice that? Well, you want to give full attention to whatever the thing is that you're doing. For example, using this um, example of going to the kitchen to get that glass of water, what you might do, knowing that you're going to be changing locations, you say to yourself when you get up, I am going to the kitchen now to get a glass of water. This might seem a little bit silly to say that out loud. You can say it in your head too if you want to. You don't have to say it out loud. That will help you though remember what it is that you're doing because you've given it a little bit of attention and that only takes two or three seconds or less. And then of course, if you want to improve your memory, your cognition, your brain health, your ability to pay attention, it is incredibly important that you are getting enough sleep, that you're getting good quality sleep, that you are exercising and that you are nourishing your body and brain with good quality food. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can keep on learning simple ways to enhance your sleep and mental well-being.